eighteen hundred hours Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. Kashmiris on both sides of the line of control and the world over observe the inalienable right to self-determination day to day. The President and the Prime Minister have urged the United Nations to grant the just right of self-determination to Kashmiris under its resolutions. Prime Minister Imran Khan in a tweet today regretted the Modi regime's full support for public lynching of Muslims and attacks on minorities in India. Pakistan released 20 Indian fishermen as a goodwill gesture today. The army spokesman says Pakistan would play the role of a peacemaker and not take sides in the ongoing conflict between the United States and Iran. Iraq's parliament is holding extraordinary session today for vote on a resolution calling for the withdrawal of American troops from the country. And now the news in detail. Kashmiris on both sides of the line of control and the world over observe the inalienable right to self-determination day to day with the renewed pledge to continue their freedom struggle till the realization of the inalienable right. It was on 5th of January 1949 when the United Nations Security Council passed a resolution supporting the Kashmiris inalienable right to decide their future by themselves through the United Nations sponsored plebiscite. The day was marked by various activities including rallies, seminars and conferences across the world to remind the United Nations that it must implement its relevant resolutions to settle the Kashmir dispute to save the Kashmiris from the Indian brutalities. In Azad Kashmir, public gatherings, rallies and seminars were held at the divisional and district levels across the state to mark the Right to Self-Determination Day, addressing a function in Muzaffarabad. The AJK Prime Minister Rajiv Farooq Heather Khan said Kashmiris all over the world are reminding the United Nations Security Council to fulfill its pledge made with them on this day in 1949. Later, a rally led by the Azad Jammu Kashmir Prime Minister was taken out. The participants of the rally, holding placards and banners in their hands, chanted pro freedom and anti India slogans. A protest rally organized by the APHC AJK was also held outside the Indian High Commission in Islamabad. The President Dr. Arif Alvi and Prime Minister Imran Khan have urged the United Nations to grant the just inalienable right of self-determination to Kashmiris as promised. In his message on Kashmir's right to self-determination day, the President said the right to self-determination is a vital component of human dignity. He said communication of this day Rather, the commemoration of this day is aimed at reminding the global community that it cannot shy away from its responsibility towards the Kashmiri people. The Prime Minister, in his message, said our strong and steadfast moral, political and diplomatic support for the Kashmiri people will continue till the realization of their inalienable right to self-determination. He said on this day in 1949, the United Nations adopted a resolution that guarantees a free and fair plebiscite in Jammu and Kashmir to enable the Kashmiris realize their right to self-determination. He said being a party to the Kashmir dispute, Pakistan stands ready to play its role to ensure a free and impartial plebiscite in accordance with the United Nations Security Council resolutions. The All Parties Huryat Conference in a statement in Sirinagar today said the resolutions passed by the United Nations Security Council on Jammu and Kashmir legitimize the struggle of the Kashmiri people for their inalienable right to self-determination. The APHC also condemned the continued lockdown of the territory by the Indian government. The forum led by the Mirwais Omar Farooq in a statement in Sirinagar said the people of occupied Kashmir have been deprived of all basic rights at gunpoint. Meanwhile, the residents of the Kashmir Valley and Muslim majority areas of the Jammu region continue to face hardships on the 154th consecutive day to day due to the military siege and lockdown imposed by the Indian authorities. 
Prime Minister Imran Khan says the recent condemnable incident in Nankana is against his vision and will not be tolerated at all. In a tweet, he said minorities find protection by the police and judiciary in Pakistan. The Prime Minister said there is a difference between this incident and the routine attacks against minorities in India, which are supported by the Modi government and are part of his RSS agenda. He said the Rashtriya Savayam Sevak Sangoons conducting public lynchings of Muslims are not only supported by the Modi government, but the Indian police also leads such attacks. Pakistan released 20 Indian fishermen as a goodwill gesture today. These fishermen were released from the Landhi jail in Karachi and sent to Lahore. They will be handed over to the Indian officials at the Wagha border tomorrow. This is Radio Pakistan. The Director General Inter Services Public Relations, Major General Asif Wafur, says Pakistan would play the role of a peacemaker and not take sides in the ongoing conflict between the United States and Iran. Talking to private news channels, he said Pakistan has defeated and eliminated terrorism on its territory and would not allow its soil to be used against any other country. Major General Asif Ghafoor rubbished the claims made by the Indian media that Pakistan's policy towards Iran has changed in the wake of the resumption of American military training program for the Pakistan army as mere propaganda and fake news. He said Islamabad and Washington had been in talks for the last four or five months over the issue and linking it as Pakistan aligning with the United States is Indian propaganda. He said the Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa in his telephonic conversation with the American Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said the region is making progress towards peace from a very bad situation and the Baghdad incident would be detrimental to the peace efforts. Iraq's parliament has convened an extraordinary session today for a vote on resolution calling for withdrawal of American troops from the country. The session comes two days after the Iranian military commander Qasem Soleimani and Iraqi militia leader Abu Mahdi al muhandis were killed in an American attack in Baghdad. The United States and Iran continue to trade threats amid rising tensions over the killing of General Qasem Soleimani by the United States in Iraq. The American President Donald Trump today warned Iran that the United States will hit it harder than ever before if Tehran retaliates. He warned that the United States will target 52 sites in Iran, some of which are highly sensitive and important to Iran if Tehran attacks American personnel or assets. Meanwhile, Iran condemned the American President Donald Trump's threat to hit Iranian sites. In a tweet, the Iranian Information Minister Mohammad Javad Azari said nobody can defeat the great Iranian nation. On the other side, the American Secretary of State Mike Pompeo criticized the European response to the attack. Hundreds of thousands of people have attended the funeral procession of General Qasem Soleimani and his companions in the Iranian city of Ahwaz. The mourners waving flags and holding aloft portraits of Qasem Soleimani were chanting anti-US and anti-Israel slogans. In Libya, at least 30 people have been killed and 33 others wounded in an attack on a military academy in the capital, Tripoli. The health ministry said there has been an increase in airstrikes and shelling around Tripoli. In Italy, six German tourists were killed and 11 injured today after a driver crashed into a group of people in the small town of Latash in South Tyrol. The 27-year-old driver of the car has been arrested on suspicion of vehicular manslaughter. And finally, the weather. Widespread rain with snowfall over the hills is expected in Balochistan, Lower Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, South and Central Punjab, at scat places in Upper Punjab, Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan, while at isolated places in Upper Sin during the next 12 hours. Heavy rainfall and snowfall is also expected in Northern Balochistan during the period. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk, and you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.